Hey guys, welcome back to Med School Moose. This video is going to be complex level 1 high yield concepts for the viscerosomatic reflexes. Before I get started, I just wanted to make two quick announcements. First of all, I am using a new microphone, finally. So hopefully the audio quality for this video is significantly better than the previous videos have been. And hopefully it stays that way moving forward. And my second announcement is that I just want to give a quick plug for my new podcast that goes by the same name, Med School Moose. I created this podcast to kind of share my own experiences in the medical field and talk about what you know life is in the medical arena, uh, talk about experiences in medical school, how to be successful in medical school. So I will be sharing some of my own experiences as well as interviewing friends, uh, other physicians, and prominent members of the field really to just get as much information about life and medicine as I can out there. Uh, so that podcast is available on Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Spotify, Pocket Casts, and wherever else you may listen to your podcast. I also do have a link in the description, so be sure to check that out. I'm very new at this and I'm still learning, so please give me some feedback, constructive criticism on how it can be better, and ideas for future episodes, and I will certainly try to make that happen. So let's go ahead and get started with today's video. I first want to start off with a couple important points about viscerosomatic reflexes, just three quick ones. And the first is that a viscerosomatic reflex is different from a somatovisceral reflex. And I'm just going to go ahead and list the definitions for these because it's pretty apparent how and why they're different. So a viscerosomatic reflex is stimulation or pain in a visceral area in an organ that causes a reflex in a related somatic area, in this case, the vertebral spine. So viscero-somatic, it goes from the viscera, from the organ, to the somatic area, to the vertebral spine. A somatovisceral reflex is the exact opposite of that. It's going to be stimulation or pain in a somatic area, which could be the vertebral spine, but could also be some other bones, and that's going to cause a reflex in a related visceral area in the organ. So somatovisceral starts in the somatic area in the bones and it goes to the visceral area, the organs. So should be pretty easy to keep apart if you just understand what the name means. Um, but the terminology is thrown out there pretty freely on complex level one. So I don't want people to get tripped up by that. The second important point is that viscerosomatic reflexes, the levels are going to vary a little bit. What do I mean by that? Uh, for the purposes of what we're doing today, the viscerosomatic reflex for the heart is going to be about T1 to T5, the thoracic spine segments 1 through 5. Some sources may list that as 2 through 6 or as 1 through 6, so it can vary a segment or so. Um, so if you see that on the exam, don't get completely tripped up by it because it's not what you've memorized. Just understand that some of these viscerosomatic reflexes can vary, and as long as it's pretty much inclusive of what you've learned, it's probably going to be the right answer. And the last question, or the last important point here is that questions may not use all the levels. And what that means is going back to the same example of the heart, uh, we're going to say that for today's purposes, it's T1 to T5, but a question may have T2 to T4 or T2 to T5. It may not include that full segment like we're used to. Do not get tripped up by that. You know, it still includes the majority of the segments and, you know, the, the exams love to do that to kind of see if you actually understand the concept. So if you see that and it's not inclusive of all the segments that you learned, but it's inclusive of most of them, it is more than likely the right answer. So moving on now, this is uh, the viscerosomatic reflexes chart from the American College of Osteopathic Family Physicians. Um, it is the first search result that comes up if you search this on Google, and it's a little bit messy. So we're going to use a different chart, and we're definitely going to simplify this a lot. And the first way that we're going to simplify it is we're only going to be talking about the sympathetic viscerosomatic reflexes today, not the parasympathetic. And the reason for that is is that the parasympathetic viscerosomatic reflexes are fairly low, low, low yield. Excuse me. I have never seen any questions on them, and as you can see here, even though I've crossed it out, the majority of them have to do with the occiput C1 and C2. So we're just going to be covering sympathetic viscerosomatic reflexes for today. Okay, so this is the chart that was given to me by my school, so I am a little biased towards it. However, I think that it is nice and simple uh, and an easy way to study. So that's what I'm going to be using to, to talk about this topic today. 
And the unfortunate point with the viscerosomatic reflexes is that a lot of this is just going to be rote memorization. Um, there's really no other way to put it. You kind of just have to sit down and memorize all these different segments. However, the good news with that is that this is very, very high yield for Comlex Level 1. I can guarantee that you will be getting questions asking what these viscerosomatic reflexes are one way or another. And if you have memorized it, uh, you know, that is easy points to get. So um, you do have to memorize it, but I am going to give a couple tips as to how to go about that. And the first way that we're going to do that is essentially by kind of grouping them segmentally. And what I mean by that is we're going to start here at the top with head, eyes, ears, nose, and throat, and the heart. We see that the commonality here is essentially T1 to T4. And I apologize for my handwriting. Not too good, but we will make do with it. So T1 to T4 is going to be head, eyes, ears, nose, and throat, as well as the heart on the left side, because the heart is on the left side of the body. Pretty self-explanatory there. The next segments that we're going to group together are going to be T2 to T6, which is going to be the lungs and esophagus. And that should also make sense, going a little bit lower than the heart. Um, and these are both components of the respiratory system. So T2 to T6 is going to be lungs and esophagus. We're going to have the stomach by itself. Stomach is going to be T5 to T9 on the left side. And that should make sense because the stomach is on the left side of the body. And then right below that, we're going to have another uh, commonality of segments. And that is going to be T7 to T9. And this is going to encompass a lot of different things. Um, on the left side of the body, it's going to be the spleen and the pancreas, and that should make sense because those organs are on the left side of the body. And on the right side of the body, it's going to be the liver and the, gall the gallbladder, which are, of course, on the right side of the body. So T7 to T9 is going to be four different organs, but, uh, you know, group them together based on where they're located, and that should help you memorize it a little bit easier. The next thing that I'm going to group together here is going to be the adrenals and the small intestine. And this is going to be essentially T8 to T10. Um, so the adrenals are going to be right below the liver gallbladder, kind of anatomically, if you can think of it that way. So that's going to go T8 to T10. And then the small intestine is also in that area, and that is going to be T8 or T9 to T10. Remember, these segments can vary by uh, one segment or so. So T8 to T10, T9 to T10 that's generally in the area of the small intestine. So that's what we want to be thinking about. The next part that I want to talk about here is going to be a commonality between um, the ovaries and testes and the right colon. And that's going to be T10 to T11. And the way that I like to memorize that, and hopefully you'll like to memorize it too, is by using the mnemonic COT, C-O-T. Uh, and the C here stands for right colon, the O stands for ovaries, and the T stands for testes. So T10 to T11, we want to be thinking about cot, uh, right colon, ovaries, and testes. Then going right below that, the kidney is one in particular that for some reason always tripped me up, and it doesn't really have anything related to it segmentally. So this is just one, unfortunately. It's the weird one. It's the zebra that you're going to have to memorize, uh, and that is T10 to L1. So it covers... A good uh, few areas in the thoracolumbar junction T10 to L1 is going to be the kidneys then right below that we're going to have another common segment and this is going to be T12 to L2 and this is going to encompass the um, bladder and the ureters the left colon the uterus and the prostate and the way that I like to remember this one is by using the mnemonic B cup. B is for bladder, C is for left colon, U is for uterus and ureters, and P is for prostate. So B cup will help cover a lot of those viscerosomatic reflexes. And if you get confused as to both of these C's, just remember that in digestion or, you know, the passage of food and stool, the right colon comes before the left colon. So just like in the mnemonics, the right colon will come up here. T10 to L1, and then the left colon will come down here, T12 to L2. And then the last one that's really worth mentioning is way here at the bottom, and that's going to be the rectum and the sigmoid. It is the end of the um, digestive or, you know, excretion process, and it's going to be the end of the viscerosomatic reflexes, so that's just going to be it by itself down here at L1 to L2. The upper extremity and lower extremity 
I guess it's a good reference point to kind of remember where you are. I've never seen questions asked about these particularly. I just think the more important thing to know here is that the viscerosomatic reflexes are going to be running from T1 to L2. So it starts with head, eyes, ears, nose, and throat up at T1, and it ends with the rectum and the sigmoid down at L2. If you see anything beyond that, it is not a viscerosomatic reflex, so do not be tripped up by that. Okay, so that's the end of this video. Hopefully this kind of clarified and, and showed you an easier way to kind of group and memorize the viscerosomatic reflexes. Also keep in mind those important points that we talked about, that the segments may vary a little bit, that there are differences between viscerosomatic and somatovisceral reflexes, and that some questions on COMLEX will not include all of the uh, segments that I mentioned here. But hopefully this gave you an easier way to memorize it. Thank you so much for watching this video. Please subscribe if you haven't done that yet. Leave me comments and feedback as to what I can be doing better and future videos. Thank you so much for watching. Good luck studying.